So it's no secret that drone footage can drastically improve the perceived production value of your video. There's just something special about aerial footage that takes people's breath away so long as the view is breathtaking. I touched up on this in one of my other videos. If you missed that one, click up here. Now, the thing about flying your drone to get beautiful shots is most areas, not all, but most, actually quite a lot of areas, are not drone friendly. I don't know about other drone pilots, but I always try to follow the drone laws as best as I can with the understanding that I have of them. Whenever a client or prospect asks me for drone footage of a particular area, I would first check my sectional chart to see where the intended flight would fall relative to any controlled airspaces. I would also Google the town's drone laws and regulations to see if there were any restrictions unrelated to control their spaces. I then would check all my apps to see if they gave the okay. And even after all that, I'm still paranoid someone's going to call the cops on me for flying, even though I have my part 107 drone pilot license, which legally allows me to fly for work. I admit my precautions are a bit on the extreme side when compared to people who just completely ignore drone regulations, but it's usually those people who get the best shots. Obviously, this is because ignoring the rules just gives you more options of where to fly. Now, I've always wanted to get drone footage of New York City, but legally, this isn't possible. Now, before I go on, I just wanted to give my full disclaimer that this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am not claiming to be an expert on drones, nor the laws, rules, and regulations pertaining to flying drones. You should always consult the FAA website or your state and county laws before you fly your drone. Always follow the rules, always fly safe. Thank you so much for listening. Now, majority of Manhattan is covered by the Class B airspace above LaGuardia Airport. And if you don't want your drone to fly and crash into a passenger airplane, just stay away from airports. Now, there are some certain areas of the city that are not covered by this Class B airspace, so one would think that it's okay to fly there. However, this is straight from the FAA website. Small unmanned aircraft may not operate over any persons not directly participating in the operation, not under a covered structure, and not inside a covered stationary vehicle. So what all this is saying is you cannot fly your drone over people who are not directly involved in your shoot if they are unprotected by some sort of stationary housing, which would imply that you cannot fly over moving vehicles because there's a risk that you will distract the driver and an accident could happen. Now, when you consider the population density of New York City with all the people walking in the sidewalk and all the congested traffic in the streets, it's going to be next to impossible to find a flight path that doesn't violate the before mentioned rules. Here's another rule, again, straight off the FAA website. It says this, visual line of sight only, parentheses, VLOS. The unmanned aircraft must remain within VLOS of the remote pilot in command and the person manipulating the flight controls of the small UAS. Alternatively, the unmanned aircraft must remain within VLOS of the visual observer. This means you as the pilot must keep your drone within your sights at all times, or you designate someone else to keep the drone in their sights at all times, while you, the remote pilot in command, manipulate the controls. If the drone goes behind a building or tree that is no longer within your line of sight, therefore it violates this rule. And the tall ass buildings in Manhattan are perfect hiding spots for drones. And of course there's this, straight off of nyc.gov, Drones are more formally known as Unmanned Aerial Vehicles, UAV. It is illegal to fly them in New York City, so there you go. If you attempt to fly in Manhattan, you're pretty much fucked. Man, but I still want to get aerial footage.
Okay, so a few things about riding a helicopter for aerial footage. First things first, safety first. Please listen to all of the instructions that the staff and pilot give you so that way you don't fall out of a moving helicopter. Number two, get a window seat if possible. Obviously, this will give you the best unobstructed view out of the helicopter and you could film without having to reach over the other passengers. Now, with the company that I flew with, the only guaranteed way to get a window seat is to pay extra for it. Otherwise, they assign the seating based on a balanced weight distribution so that way the helicopter doesn't lean towards one side. Everyone weighs in upon arrival at the terminal and based on who shows up at your time slot, they do the math and then they assign the seating for each helicopter so that way it's balanced. So I highly, highly recommend booking your tickets as a big group if you don't wanna fly with strangers, so that way, even as a group, they will seat you according to your weight. Last but not least, make sure you have the right camera gear. With the pilot's approval, you can bring a gimbal on the helicopter, which I didn't know beforehand. When you're up there, the helicopter has some pretty strong vibrations from the propellers, so anything handheld is not going to be stabilized at all. Fortunately, DaVinci Resolve did a decent job at saving all my footage. If your camera could shoot 4K, shoot in 4K. This just gives you the option to crop in in post without losing too much detail because you really don't have too much control of how close you could get to the sights. Or you could just use a zoom lens. Be sure to check out the description below. I have all kinds of good stuff down there, including the link to the company that I flew with and a link to my Patreon profile. If you like my videos and like what I'm doing, you could show me some love and support by becoming a patron. I also accept likes and comments down below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. This is Kevin Mendoza, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.